Hi there. My name is Joran Jenkins, and I'm a collaborative lawyer. I use posters to help me communicate some of the difficult concepts that we talk about in collaborative divorce. But actually, the first poster I want to talk about today is my courtless divorce processes poster. I use this poster when I have a consult first come in. Sometimes I have um, a couple come in. A wife will bring her husband. A husband will bring his wife. A man will bring his girlfriend. Um, and I will sit and talk to both of them. Uh, but I'm not giving legal advice in that consultation. I'm talking to them about the various types of processes that they can use to resolve uh, their differences. So the, um, the poster that I use is this one. I start off by talking about uh, the default divorce. Um, if you're a lawyer, you know what I'm talking about. This is where um, one of the parties files a divorce petition. They wait for an answer, uh, but they don't get an answer. The other party ignores them. They get served, but they ignore them. And the court will enter a default judgment in that case. So this is how I explain to the non-lawyer what this process looks like. Um, it has pictures. I said to a consult who came in today, a wife brought her husband in. I'd already done a consult with the wife. She wanted to bring the husband in to understand the process, to hear the same things that I had told her. And, um, and I said to him, um, I use pictures because half of us uh, use words. And he points to himself and he goes, and the other half of us use pictures. <laughs> so he got it right away, what I was talking about. The second process that I like to talk about is the do-it-yourself or the kitchen table process. This is where usually there aren't any children. Maybe it's a short-term marriage. There's no real estate. Maybe two of the three or maybe all three. And the both, both parties agree. Both husband and wife know what they're willing to do, what they want to do. And so one of them goes online and finds the paperwork and completes it and files it. That's what we call the do-it-yourself divorce. The kitchen table plus is uh, something that I, it's a phrase I've coined. I talk about the fact that, OK, both of you agree, but now you're concerned that the paperwork is a little too complex for you, or maybe your agreement is a little too complex. Maybe there is some real estate, or you need a parenting plan to, um, to add to the mix of documents. So you go to a lawyer, one of you goes to a lawyer to draft up the agreement and maybe some of the paperwork. Um, and, and that goes fine. Your, uh, your spouse, your husband, your wife, whoever, signs the paperwork, is happy with the paperwork, and you go to court, and that's fairly inexpensive. That's the kitchen table plus one lawyer. Then you've got one lawyer, one spouse. So now what's happening is you both agree. One of you hires that attorney to do the paperwork. The lawyer might recommend some changes to what you think you've agreed to, and you like that idea. Or maybe he drafts it up, and you take it to your husband or your wife, and it's not exactly what your spouse thought you had agreed to. In any event, what happens is your spouse maybe calls the lawyer, or the lawyer maybe calls your spouse, and they talk to each other and maybe negotiate the changes. Maybe you're helping with that. The three of you negotiate the changes, which is why the picture has three people in it. And then you go to court, and you get divorced. So again, fairly simple, but now the lawyer is taking a more active role. The cost has gone up a little bit. We'll talk about that in a minute. In the fifth process, I talk about two lawyers and two spouses. That's where the other spouse then gets a lawyer. So you've gotten your lawyer. That lawyer maybe has drafted the documents. And now your husband or your wife wants his or her own lawyer because they need some legal advice. They need to understand what it is exactly they're signing. It's a little more complex than, than this one up here. So they call an attorney. And maybe the two attorneys both understand that you guys don't want to go to court. They're settlement based. They, they understand that the drive here is simply to get a good agreement in place that both of you can be comfortable with. They also know that you want to promote cooperative co-parenting. You don't want to go to war. You're going to be parents to these kids until you die, hopefully. And um, so you want to keep the divorce respectful and friendly. So the attorneys are really on, on the same page with the two clients who are just trying to do what's fair. And they negotiate the agreement. The, the cost has gone up a bit more from this one. But you go to court and you get divorced. 
And then you've got mediation. Now mediation is um, it's an official process. These are all my terms for what I've seen happen, um, except do it yourself. Everyone knows about that. But, but these are um, just various um, complications of the do it yourself, if you will. Um, mediation involves yet a separate professional. So now we have a mediator involved in your divorce. A mediator is a neutral third party. Mediator in Florida can be a lawyer, it can be a mental health professional, a family uh, a counselor, uh, or it can be a financial professional of some kind, uh, maybe a, a, a CPA. Um, all of these people have been trained in the mediation process and they mediate between you and your spouse. Maybe they help you negotiate with each other. They facilitate a conversation and they help damp down um, maybe some anger, some flare-ups that might occur during the process. They help keep the tone respectful. You can do mediation with just the two of you. And many people come to me, they're pro se's. The actual couple that came this morning has, um, and that we talked about the, the visuals, um, they actually elected at the end of the conversation to go with mediation. They're going to hire me as their mediator rather than wife hiring me as her lawyer to draft the documents because they, they think they've pretty much got it all figured out. They may need a little bit of direction from a mediator, a little facilitation, but it's, it's pretty much in the bag. So um, you mediate either pro se, that's without lawyers, or you can go to a mediator with lawyers. Now that's going to get fairly pricey because now you've got three professionals, fairly high priced professionals if you've got three lawyers, um, all charging by the hour during your mediation. The other thing about mediation, many mediators will mediate for four hour blocks of time, maybe even eight hour blocks of time, and sometimes, uh, not that often in family law, but certainly in the civil realm, you can mediate for 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, until everybody gets so tired that they just sign the agreement. You can mediate, uh, uh, you can break after a day, come back for another day, in, um, in mediations in my office, we tend to keep them to two hours. Maybe we'll go longer if both of the parties are okay with that. But we try to keep them to two hours because we don't want to wear people down. We want them to be on the same page, to, to be at their best, not negotiating uh, under some kind of duress or, or coercion. And I don't mean coercion from the other party. I just mean from tiredness, fatigue. So we keep them to, to two hours, three at the max. Um, and we usually get a lot done. We might have two or three sessions if they're kids and a house and a bunch of issues. Um, but I've done mediations in as little as uh, an hour and a half when there was just a house. That's all they were mediating over. And then we have the collaborative process down at the bottom. This is my fave, but um, it is getting pricier because now you've got even more professionals involved in the process. This is the newest kid on the block, collaborative practice. We have two lawyers, and the only uh, requirement to make it collaborative is that the lawyers sign an agreement that they will not go to court. So now you not only have the lawyers sort of on the same page with you, but they've actually signed up. They are not going to go to court, and if you guys decide that you can't work this out, that one of you says, nope, I'm going to court, the lawyers are fired. Now, we'll, of course, we'll help you find new lawyers, um, so it's not much of a stick, but it's a little bit of a stick for the clients. It's even more of a stick for the lawyers, because if we're unsuccessful, we lose our clients. So we really, really, really want to get you to an agreement that you're comfortable with, that you can live with. And we have help when we do that. We have, um, we have a financial professional who comes in who's a neutral. So instead of going to court and hiring two experts who battle each other and who charge to do that, so they not only charge to do the work, but then they have to charge to defend their own work and to attack the other guy's work. Um, we have, in this process, one neutral who just does his job. He just has to work the numbers, find the numbers. He talks to both parties. They both are open and transparent with him, and they give him everything that they think he needs to help them understand the finances, help them understand the budgeting, um, help them understand the assets, help them understand the, the family debts that need to be distributed to whomever is best able to pay them. So all of that. You've got that financial guy who is, who is with you and is there to help. And then you've got the facilitator. 
The facilitator is more like the mediator in, in the other process. They facilitate the negotiations. They usually have a mental health background. In fact, in Florida, they always do. It's going to be um, a licensed mental health counselor or maybe a licensed family and marriage counselor. Um, could be a psychologist. It's whoever's best suited to facilitate. These are fairly, um, they're, they're not the type of marriage counselors that you think of when you think of a, a family counselor who sits there and, uh, there and asks you a lot of questions. They're trying to help you understand what's going on. No, this person is the leader of the team. This person is running the meeting. This person is drafting the agendas. This person is keeping us all on track with where we're coming from, where we're going, how we're getting there, what the party's goals and interests are, and how we keep those in sight. So that person is, is critical uh, in most of our collaborative divorce cases. Now, you can do a collaborative divorce with just lawyers, and I have. I did my first one in 2002 with just two lawyers. Um, or you can do them with uh, just a financial professional or with just a, a facilitator professional. But generally, in Florida, we like to do them with um, one financial and one facilitator. Now, I, I will tell you that in other states, in California, for example, um, they tend to have two what we call facilitators, they call coaches. And so each uh, client in this process will have his or her own facilitator or coach. And then you have the financial professional. And I understand that in California, the financial professional is the guy who leads the team and keeps everybody on track and everybody uh, pursuing their goals and interests. That's what my processes look like. I don't have litigation on here because litigation is not courtless. You have to go to court to get a final judgment in Florida, pretty much. Um, you've got to go to court or at least send your paperwork to a judge to have a judge sign off. So it's not court, um, not, not court, no court. It's not no court. But it is courtless because a five-minute hearing is a lot better than five years of litigation. So I've left litigation. It doesn't go on here. It is a divorce process. It's actually the divorce process that most people think of when they think of going to court. They think of Perry Mason. They think of um, Judge Judy. Um, and, and in fact, that is how a courtroom divorce will um, will happen, but in this office we try to avoid that. We try to go with the less expensive alternatives, all of which these are. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I'm going to talk next about the poster, the costs poster. Thank you for listening. <laughs>